Hi, Grind here. Hi, this is Old Green. And uh, we're going to do a reply video because uh, we had a viewer who was very polite bring up that in the uh, one of our videos, his name was uh, Kayan uh, Four Fifty One. Uh, yeah, it reads kind of like Cajun to me, but maybe hey. we don't want to mispronounce your name. Yeah. We're not sure, but we're just saying that we're going to do a reply to you to start the video off. Uh, this one is going to utilize the uh, the nail. Or some people misconceive as a spike, and Roland Morzeka brought this up uh, in his videos that it could help catch a, uh, a sword. Uh, we're going to use this in this one to actually redo the technique we did in, uh, I believe, episode, what was it, uh, two? Uh, I believe one? so, yeah. Right, uh, I believe it's two, unless we've done three and I didn't know it, uh, of just the shield. Uh, but this one right here, uh, there's a chance you can catch the blade. You can actually keep the blade in a position by binding. So we're going to redo the technique with that, but we'll also address this problem that uh, Kayan451 or Cajun 451 brought up, that uh, when I was standing in the video, uh, I had the shield at an angle like this, so it looked like that Eldrum could just cut directly into my legs or frotch and cut me in half, possibly if he had enough force, or at least injure me for my thrust or my slice. So we're going to redo that. Uh, we're also going to try this out, see how this works at trapping a blade. Uh, this is a very shallow center boss. These were made for reenactment in the SCA, uh, is what I use this one for. And it's very, very shallow. These would normally be domed much more than this. And they also have versions of uh, Viking center bosses that came way out in such a way that they had an indentation or a groove around the outside. So the actual protruding boss was bigger than uh, this area here, meaning something could get caught in that area, right here on the shield. And earlier century shields had this nail, or whatever you would like to call it. They call it a misconceived as a spike, because some of these have big flat pieces to run, so there's no way they can use as a weapon. They look a lot like doorknobs. Yeah, we already know that the shield couldn't, you know, you couldn't punch a man with this easily. There's no way. Something would hit it, it would move. There's no way to use this spike unless your shield was carved down to nothing. You know, which that probably didn't really happen. You, know? you could still use a broken shield, but I doubt somebody fought till they had something the size of a buckler. Now, uh, anyway, we will start this, and we're going to start off by redoing what we did in our last video, but with the nail, and we'll address the angling of the shield and how you feel the blade. Because you can feel the blade on the shield. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, we're going to do our first technique is if a blow comes underneath, and I have my shield ready, and he throws like a blow trying to go under the shield. And when I bring it around, notice what happened. He's trapped here. I got my thrust in here. He even has a shield up. Put your shield back up where you feet. I can press this into the shield. So, I mean, he's actually pretty much trapped pretty well. If you try to continue through with the nail, what happens? You can't go down. No, I'm trying to go down. Right. So You're trapped. He's trapped here. The only thing you can do is go up. If I feel him coming up and over, you know, I pretty much can feel the whole thing. He's not going to be able to just come back over easily. I wouldn't necessarily need to do that. Okay, this one is less used. Uh, at least I don't use it as much. But let's say he wanted to come in at the top, and I bring it to this one. Now, what he was saying is it looks like if I have my shield angled this way, see, now he can't come up. I have this against the shield, have the shield up. And I step in quickly. I have my cut, or my thrust, but he can't... Uh, he can't possibly, uh, which way can he not go uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, He's trapped in. So if I do have an angle and he tries to come down, like in the other video, he hit my shin slightly. Let's try going all the way over. See, I can feel that is what I'm trying to show. I can angle the shield out. Let's try to go all the way over. If you watch what happened, I felt that as he slid the shield. Here, so you see it, I'm going to put my shield down. There's no way he no could, shield more. Yeah, he's going to have his arm as he has a shield. We're going to pretend he has a shield. He hits. And basically, I still get my thrust. My thrust would still be right there if I react instantly. Well, oh, I like is how the shield kicks out. I can do my cut and just angle a cut over here and hit him right, right across the head. I can do something where I angle it in this way. Still with my hand behind the shield protected. I mean, there's so many different things I could do. I could do a thrust this way, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. That's whatever I feel is better for my counter. Well, what's important is the way you right. kick. When he's hitting the, way the top, kick. we do it really fast. He's still open. He has no shield. I couldn't normally do that. I'd have to come over the top or cut in such a way. But this, what I'm trying to say is we're just showing that, yes, I can feel it. That's not going to happen. 
But uh, let's say I was standing like I was, the, the video actually adds a different aspect to it. Just go slow, like hit it, we'll go over, whatever, yeah, let's catch it. Yeah. And I bring it over, which I think we get caught on that. I got caught on the... Oh, he got caught on the niche in that. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. That is cool. Let's do it one more time. One more time. Yeah, I bring it over. See how it's here. I want to only hold the angle up. Put, put it back on. It's later. Right. So I have the angle that you saw in the other video. If he aims at my leg, he cut, but he didn't actually hit me in the crotch. He didn't hold me up higher. Even if I didn't feel somehow he came around, it looks much closer than it is. Well. It's a matter of perception. Right. He's hitting me, yes, but I, I, it, there is some power there, but if he'd stopped first and then tried to cut, he'd have no power. If he goes all the way through, I can feel it all the way around. That's what, that's what I was trying to explain. As I'm doing it, I can feel it. I'm not going to do this. Or in the other video, I kind of did that, but you know, I pretty much knew I was pushing so grand, into the shield and stuff. Is that to say that it's a lot like having sword against sword? Correct. When you feel the blade. Yeah. Yeah, and you instantly know. Like, if he's got me here and he comes in, and I can feel he's pushing that way, so yeah. I just let the blade go. And right. So it's like you And I do make like... mistakes as well, but I mean, I could feel his sword, and I knew that basically we were doing a trap, and I was just holding it here to show the... Uh, we weren't following through that. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. But you still have your opportunity. Absolutely. Leave that on. Don't don't edit that out. Yeah.